Hi. Welcome to Prime Recap. After earning the title of Legendary Dragon Warrior, a panda who has never been in a fight must master the five styles of Kung Fu to defeat Tai Lung, a powerful snow leopard master of martial arts. Today we recap the story of the 2008 movie Kung Fu Panda. At the Jade Palace, Master Shifu is training his disciples when a messenger goose named Zung appears to say that Master Ogwe wants to see him. In the Hall of Warriors, he meets the elderly turtle, who claims to have had a vision about the return of Tai Lung the former disciple of Shifu who has been imprisoned for more than 20 years. In disbelief, the little lemur orders Zung to go to the prison to ask the jailers to double their guard and Ogwe warns that fate cannot be avoided, but that they can prepare themselves by choosing someone to receive the dragon scroll and help him walk the warrior's path. At the foot of the palace, a panda named Po spends his days working in the noodle store of his father, Mr. Ping. Despite making a living in the kitchen, the bear's big dream is to become a kung fu master, but since he never had the support of Mr. Ping to train and become a fighter, Po pretends he loves cooking, even though he doesn't see the slightest fun in it. When the day comes to choose the new dragon warrior, the panda wakes up very excited and starts pretending to be a kung fu master, but Mr. Ping needs help in the restaurant and asks him to come down. While serving the customers, Po sees the palace officials putting up a poster in the restaurant and finds out about the appointment of the new dragon warrior, getting anxious to attend the ceremony. To empty the restaurant, the panda starts calling customers to come to the palace, but Mr. Ping says this is a great opportunity to make customers and asks his son to take the noodle cart with him. As a big fan of martial arts, Po tries to convince his father to let him just watch, but becomes afraid of hurting him and eventually gives up on making the request, agreeing to carry the stall up the stairs. Because of the large amount of food, the panda realizes that it will take hours to reach the palace and decides to abandon the noodle cart, climbing as fast as he can, however. He still takes too long and arrives just as the guards close the gate, forcing him to hang out of a small window to watch. Ready to begin, Shifu summons his main disciples who are known as the Furious Five, being the Tigress, Viper, Crane, Monkey and the Praying Mantis. In the arena, each one decides to give a little demonstration of his abilities and the Crane shows the strength of his wings, flapping them with such speed that it generates a wind capable of closing the window on which Poe is hanging. Not wanting to miss the tournament, the panda runs to the gate and tries to watch through a small gap in the wood, but with the crowd in front of him, he can barely see. Determined to attend the show, Po tries to kick down the door, but as he lacks the strength and skill, he decides to try other things, throwing himself into a catapult and jumping over the wall with a bamboo, failing each time. After all five have introduced themselves, Master Ogwe senses that the dragon warrior is among them and says he is prepared to make his choice. In order not to miss the big moment, Po decides to use the fireworks of the celebration to assemble a kind of jet chair that will take him inside the temple, but as soon as he lights the wick, Mr. Ping appears and tries to put out the fire while asking what his son is doing while preparing for takeoff. The panda decides to tell him that he has always hated cooking and that his great passion has always been kung fu, but for some reason, the rockets don't light and he falls face first to the ground. Frustrated, Po decides to listen to his father and go back to the restaurant, but the fires ignite just as he tries to get up, causing him to fly against the wall and take off soon after, exploding in mid-flight and falling already passed out in the middle of the arena. When he wakes up, Po sees that the Furious Five are around him and that Ogwe is pointing in his direction, naming him as the new dragon warrior. Impressed, Shifu and Ping don't believe it's true, but the elder turtle confirms his choice, causing the crowd to start celebrating and bringing the palace officials to take the new warrior to the temple. Disgusted, Shifu tries to convince Ogwe that it was an accident and that Po will not be able to face Tai Lung, however, the elderly turtle insists that he made the right decision and takes him to the Sacred Hall of Warriors, which holds the most legendary weapons in all of China, as well as the sacred scroll in the mouth of a dragon. Impressed, the panda ends up knocking over an ancient vase and Shifu shows up to discourage him, saying that he won't be the dragon warrior until he can get the artifact from the ceiling. But since he's just an obese bear, Po won't be able to learn the kung fu fundamentals necessary for that. Wanting to make him give up, the master takes the panda to the training room where he finally meets the Furious Five, his biggest idols. To embarrass him in front of everyone, Shifu orders Po to punch the children's training dummy with all his strength, but when he does, the object goes backwards and comes back with a lot of energy, hitting the panda's head so hard that it pushes him backwards, making him fall on the advanced training circuit. With no skill whatsoever, Po is hit by all the equipment in the dojo and leaves completely defeated, being badly bruised after receiving so many blows. In the far north, Zung finally arrives at the prison and delivers his master's message to the guards, but instead of doing what Shifu asked, the rhinos confidently tell him that it is impossible to escape from the place, 
since there is only one exit and more than a thousand guards for only one prisoner. To prove that his prison is safe, the chief jailer takes the messenger to Tai Lung and starts to provoke him, stepping on the white tiger's tail and saying that Shifu chose another to be the dragon warrior instead, however this was a big mistake. As they return to the elevator, one of Zeng's feathers falls next to the fighter who uses his tail to pick it up and use it as a lockpick, removing the device that prevented him from moving. Furious, Tai Lung begins to suspend the rocks attached to his arms, alerting the guards who try to hit him with their giant arrows, but one of the projectiles ends up hitting the handcuff and freeing one of the tiger's hands. To prevent him from escaping, some jailers suspend the elevator while others continue firing arrows, giving Tai Lung more ammunition to kick towards the guards. With the remaining ones, he sets up a kind of ladder through the wall and begins to climb at an absurd speed, forcing the jailers to fire a veritable rain of arrows, but Tai Lung manages to take cover under the elevator, causing the guards to cut the chains to bring the wooden structure down into the abyss. Thinking they have defeated him, two jailers celebrate upstairs, but the white tiger soon appears between them, knocking out the rhinos and using what's left of the chain to form a kind of pendulum, throwing himself into the middle of a bridge on the next floor. Surrounded by guards, Tai Lung fights with all his might and manages to knock out the rhinos that get in his way with extreme ease, taking revenge for everything he has been through in the past 20 years. After losing more than half of his men the prison leader decides to take drastic measures and orders his archers to fire incendiary arrows towards the ceiling, causing an explosion that drops tons of stalactites on the white tiger, however Tai Lung manages to save himself, jumping from one rock to another until he reaches the explosives on the ceiling, throwing them towards the guards. After eliminating all the jailers, Shifu's former disciple grabs Zeng by the neck and orders the messenger to go to his former master to warn him that the true dragon warrior is returning. The next morning, Shifu goes to the dormitories and realizes that Po is not there. Thinking he has succeeded in making him give up, the master quite happy takes the five furious to the training area and finds the panda stuck in the parallel bar. After the crane frees him, Shifu sets each of the furious five to fight his new disciple, but as Po remains happy and determined even after repeated beatings, the grumpy lemur decides to take him on personally, using him as a punching bag until he kicks him out of the palace, causing him to roll down the stairs. Back at the palace, Mantis starts treating Po with some acupuncture sessions while they talk about Tai Lung, telling about how Shifu found the tiger and started taking care of him as if he was his son, training him to become the new dragon warrior, but Ogwe saw evil in the evil tiger's heart and refused to give him the scroll. Disgusted, the feline took out his anger on the citizens of the valley, forcing Shifu to face the one who was once his student, but he let his feelings speak louder and ended up being defeated, forcing Master Ogwe to intervene and immobilize the white tiger, sealing him in prison with the rhinos. In a room of the palace, Shifu is meditating when Zeng arrives completely desperate and tells him about Tai Lung's escape. Worried, the lemur master goes to Ogwe to break the news and ask for help, but the elderly turtle says his time has come and leaves with the peach blossoms leaving Shifu responsible for training Po until he becomes the true dragon warrior. To this end, the last elder goes to the kitchen where his disciples are gathered and tells them about Ogwe's perishment, as well as Tai Lung's escape, saying that they must return to training immediately. Frightened, Po tries to escape the palace and is stopped by Shifu, who tries to motivate him to keep training until he becomes the dragon warrior, but the panda insists on leaving, mentioning all the times his own master tried to make him give up. From afar, Tigris sees the conversation between the two and decides to take action, leaving alone to meet Tai Lung, but the other four furious have the same idea as her and together they leave towards the first disciple of Shifu, finding him in the middle of a bridge that gives access to the valley. As soon as they spot Tai Lung, the five cut the ropes that hold the construction in place, but the white tiger manages to jump to them, forcing Tigris to advance with everything towards her opponent and hitting a volley that makes both fall on the bridge, forcing the viper and the others to hold the rope to prevent her friend from falling into the abyss as well. In a hurry, Tai Lung asks where the dragon warrior is and Tigris pretends to have received the scroll, but the villain knows this is a lie and says he is looking forward to meeting his opponent, saying that the confrontation between the two will be more than legendary. Determined to stop him, Tigris goes all out on her rival, starting a great battle of felines, but even though she is a master of kung fu, the female takes the worst and ends up being easily defeated, being attached to the rope by the neck. To help her, Viper leaves her friends holding the bridge in place and sets out to confront the enemy, squeezing Tai Lung's neck with her body, but this ends up knocking down the tigress, who is saved by the crane at the last second. At that moment, the white tiger manages to turn the tables and starts squeezing the viper's body, forcing the monkey to try to help her, leaving only the little praying mantis to hold the weight of everyone on the bridge. With his unique style, 
the monkey lands a flying blow that sends Tai Lung flying, giving them a chance to combine their skills and the crane cuts the rope in half, tying the tiger to one end while he and his friends stay on the other. But that's not enough to stop the satanic feline, who starts swinging until he leaps towards the Furious Five, knocking the monkey out with a single blow. In the Jade Palace, Shifu is meditating under the peach tree when he hears screams coming from the kitchen. Curious, he approaches and finds Po raiding the cupboards already completely destroyed. Impressed by what the panda can do, the lemur says he thought he heard the monkey's voice and reveals that he often keeps his cookies on the top shelf. All to observe what Po can do for food with this, Shifu realizes that the panda is totally motivated by food and decides to use this to train him, taking him to the Lake of Sacred Tears, the place known as the Oberko of Kung Fu. There, the mustachioed mammal shows Po some dishes and tells him that he will only be able to eat at the end of the training, taking advantage of the panda bear's insatiable hunger to make him work hard. In this way, they spend their days fighting over food until Shifu believes his disciple is ready for the final challenge. To complete the training, he prepares a huge bowl of Chinese bread and asks Po to help himself, but whenever he tries to put the food in his mouth, Shifu steals it somehow. Tired and hungry, master and student engage in an insane hashish showdown, utilizing the bowl as if it were a Beyblade arena. After a long battle, Po manages to get the bread out of the bowl and prepares to eat it, but Shifu hasn't given up yet and throws his chopsticks towards the treat, trapping it in a tree branch. As the two brawl on the floor, the Chinese bun ends up oozing out of Hashi and falling right into Po's mouth, but Shifu manages to stop him from eating it and they continue in their insane brawl. After a few minutes of an insane dispute, the panda finally manages to disarm his master and take the bread, winning the dispute with great sacrifice, but he still refuses to eat the treat and returns it to Shifu. When they return to the Jade Palace, master and student find the Furious Five completely defeated, but still alive thanks to the crane who managed to carry them back. Seeing the state of his disciples, Shifu realizes that Tai Lung is stronger than before and decides that the time has finally come for Po to receive the Dragon Scroll, however when they try to read what is written on the object, they discover that the sheet is completely blank. With no hope, Shifu sends the Furious Five to evacuate the population while he is left to face his former student, agreeing to sacrifice himself so that everyone gets out alive. Outside the palace, people start fleeing the valley and Po decides to go to his father's restaurant to help with the move, being ridiculed by everyone who meets him on the street. Realizing that his son is down, Mr. Ping decides to tell him about the secret ingredient of his noodles and reveals that there is no different seasoning, that people simply believe the dish is special even for no reason. With these words, Po finally understands why the Dragon Scroll is empty and decides to return to the Jade Palace, where Shifu is waiting for his former student. Facing his master, Tai Lung goes on the attack and tries to hit a kick that completely destroys the ground, forming some stones that he uses to throw against Shifu. From behind the rock, the tiger advances towards the lemur and lands a punch that throws both into the Hall of Warriors, where Tai Lung begins to use the legendary weapons against his former master, however, even though he is old, Shifu is still very skilled and manages to get out completely unharmed. Extremely agile, he jumps from pillar to pillar while the feline goes all out on him, throwing him against the ceiling. As he falls to the ground, Tai Lung ignites his own fists with a blue flame and continues punching his former master, who receives each blow without reacting. Defeated, Shifu says he is to blame for everything that has happened and apologizes for not helping him to walk the path of good, but the tiger says he does want the scroll but not his forgiveness. At that moment, Tai Lung realizes that the seal has already been removed from the dragon's mouth and asks for the object, discovering that it was taken by the dragon warrior and that by that time it should already be on the other side of China, but that could not be more wrong. At that moment, Po appears in the hall extremely tired after climbing the stairs, but even almost out of breath, he says that he is the dragon warrior and challenges Tai Lung to take the scroll out of his hands. Extremely fast, the tiger lands a punch that sends the panda flying away, but thanks to its body fat, it ends up bouncing off the pillar and coming back hard towards Tai Lung, retrieving the scroll. Enraged, the mad leopard rushes at Po and sends them both rolling down the palace steps. As luck would have it, the panda bear always manages to get on top and smashes Tai Lung against the stone staircase several times, smothering him with his gigantic butt. In the lower part of the valley, they both start fighting over the parchment that ends up falling into a paper lantern. As soon as the object stops on the ground, Po balances on two bamboos and uses them to throw some frying pans in Tai Lung's face, as well as using his wooden leg to fight and prevent him from touching the scroll. Tired of playing, the tiger kicks Po away and runs towards the object, but the panda lands on a fireworks stand and lights the wick just as he did on the day of the ceremony, sending the cart flying towards the scroll and running over the villain who stands in the way. 
Because of his extreme speed, Poe crashes face first into a wall and drops the scroll on a statue at the top of the building, forcing the panda bear to climb up to retrieve the object. To stop him, Tai Lung hits a volley that causes the entire building to collapse, but the bear manages to get to the top anyway, running over the tiles that fly in the tiger's face. Thanks to this, the black and white bear manages to catch the scroll in midair, however the feline does not give up and goes all out on him, punching him towards the ground with such force that he opens a crater on impact. Thinking he has won, Tai Lung takes the scroll and tries to read it after 20 years, finally realizing that the object is completely blank. Realizing his rival's confusion, Po tries to explain the message he learned from his father, but this only serves to drive the tiger even more insane. Furious, Tai Lung tries to use the same paralyzing blow that he applied to the Furious Five, but due to the large amount of fat, he fails to reach Po's vital parts, who feels only a little tickle. As nothing works, the tiger decides to go back to the exchange and tries to knock him out as fast as he can, but still the panda manages to do much better, throwing him against a house so hard that he ends up destroying the wall. Completely insane, Tai Lung goes for all or nothing and advances at full speed against Po, who manages to repel him with his belly and make him fly towards the skies, plummeting from an absurd height soon after. Already defeated, the tiger decides to try one last punch and ends up falling to the Wuxi finger hold an extremely powerful technique that only Shifu masters. Knowing that his former master would never teach him this, Tai Lung accuses Po of bluffing and says that he is just a big fat panda, but the bear replies that he is the big fat panda and that he managed to learn it on his own, executing the final blow that sends a shockwave throughout the valley. Curious, the population returns to the city and realizes that Po was the victor, revering him as the protector of the city and master of Kung Fu, just as he dreamed all his life. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.